I think during the first half of the 20th century, most Christians were profoundly affected by the worldview of the Enlightenment. In other words, we are the masters of the world. The world is here for our convenience, and we are therefore able to exploit it as we please for our own good. I think Christians have begun to review that. I'm very glad they've begun to do that. I think they've been doing it for two reasons. Number one is the simple observational fact that actually something is going wrong with things, really forcing us to re-examine things. And secondly, a re-reading of the book of Genesis. In fact, a re-reading of the entire Old Testament and beginning to realize that actually there is no way we are mandated to be the possessors of the natural world. Rather, we are its stewards. We've been entrusted with the world. Adam, remember according to Genesis 2, is put into the Garden of Eden to tend it. A wonderful image. And in many ways, we are rediscovering the central biblical insight that our responsibility to God is to tend his creation as stewards who must pass it on to the next generation and give account for the use they make of it. I find that a rather challenging thought for two reasons. Number one is it, it is saying actually that Christians needed a wake-up call before they began to realize their involvement in this area. I'm very glad it's happened, but it took far longer than it should have. But secondly, also, it is saying very, very clearly that we need to see the sciences as assistants, as helpmates in this task of conserving our world, of keeping it habitable for those who will come after us. And from the standpoint of a theologian, the whole idea of the new Jerusalem is about the restoration of of creation. In some way, there's continuity between what we now have and what there will be. Certainly discontinuity as well, but there's some strand of continuity. And that is a very powerful motivation for looking after this world, tending this Eden in which we've been placed.